Hi everybody, it's John from Backyard Eden. So today, I want to give you a look at one of the areas of the garden uh, here at our urban homestead uh, just outside Dallas. Uh, I have a, two or three different areas of the garden that I grow in and I use different methods. So I use uh, raised beds, I use containers, and then I use a, yeah, not really a back, back to Eden method. Um, but sort of. Uh, and the reason I say that is because uh, what I did was a couple of years ago, I brought in a about a yard and a half, uh, which ends up being a truck bed and a half of compost uh, made here locally. And I just put it in this area behind me. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, right now there's crazy sweet potatoes right there. Um, but so I put it a yard and a half of compost, and I just planted directly into it. I didn't do anything else to it. I didn't till. I didn't do anything. Uh, and it worked out great. Um, so, and I don't really mulch. I use a living mulch. I don't mulch with wood chips or leaves or anything like that. I use a living mulch all summer long, and it works great. So we're going to take a look, quick look at it, and then I'm going to start doing my fall cleanup and digging the sweet potatoes. And then I'll show you if I have a harvest. I don't know. I didn't actually plant them this year completely volunteer so that's what we're doing today so let's get started all right so here's kind of a look at the side i call it the side patch um the side garden the side veggie garden the side veggie patch whatever i decide to call it um but this is what it looks like now now it is november the 21st um, and yes, these are sweet potatoes still growing like crazy. Now, just to give you a brief history of this garden, of this garden here, that runs the almost the entire length of the house. Uh, this area here is not really planted much. It gets a lot of weed pressure um, from the yard, which is okay. There are some dandelions in there, and we do eat those. Uh, and it, usually I plant one or two plants here, maybe even a container. There's a five-gallon pot right there. Um, so this gets some weed pressure and that's okay, but from about right here, right where those sweet potatoes are, volunteer sweet potatoes, uh, all the way back, if you can see the orange right there, those are Mexican sunflowers. Uh, and we actually had some mammoth grays, uh, sunflowers, you can see it, there it is, bent over, and get a close-up of that in a minute um, this has all been planted for two maybe three years I can't remember it's two or three years and I plant uh, different stuff I've only planted the sweet potatoes once and they come back every year apparently I miss a, a tuber or two or twelve um, out here so it's really hard to get all the tubers out of the ground if you've ever grown sweet potatoes and know that's what this is. It is hard to get every single one, especially when you grow like this. So, but to give you a little history on it, this has been planted a couple of years now. Uh, the neighbor right here, I just simply asked her, I said, hey, uh, this is kind of a shared area. You can see there's a kind of a landscape timber right in this area right here that runs down the length of it. That divides the area over here to the left is mine. The area over here to the right where I'm actually standing, that is hers. So kind of the history on it is I just simply, I just simply asked the neighbor, I said, hey, we're going to be growing some crops out here. Uh, do you mind if it grows over onto your area? Because the whole purpose I had designed this is I was going to grow vining crops, watermelons, cantaloupes, sweet potatoes, uh, cucumbers, pumpkins whatever that was all going to go out here um so yeah it's so it's worked out great she said absolutely no problem don't mind at all all i said all i told her i would do is i would maintain this area here so before the vines got out into this area i would simply come in every week i would just mow this area for her and keep it nice and neat now it has got a little crazy with the sweet potato vines but she doesn't care uh, and actually just recently she just moved so may have to make the same agreement with the new the new uh the new neighbor so but that's okay there's no one here yet um so today we're just going to give it a give it a quick haircut get it cleaned up 
dig the potatoes and see if there's any harvest there. Uh, I'm sure there is. Uh, we have heavy clay soil underneath that compost, so there's no telling what I'll get. Uh, and then this area here, which is about a five, eh, it's a little bit more than five foot. You're looking at probably a six or seven foot wide from this, from this wood here to the wall of the house. You're looking at about a six to six and a half foot area of plantable space uh, by about 40 feet. This area will become the new perennial um, permaculture style garden um, with things like raspberries and blueberries and blackberries and all that stuff planted. Uh, and actually I've kind of already started that, not intentionally of course, uh, but here is a mulberry. Um, this is kind of the offshoots of it. Um, here is the stump. It got crazy big, and so I just simply cut it back. Um, so, and there is some sweet potato flowers. Awesome. Okay, so that's kind of the plan for today. So, uh, the bulk of the work I'll probably just fast forward through, because it's simply just pulling everything out, and, and we'll go from there. So, let's get started. Hi everybody, we're back. And so that was just a quick look at what we're doing today. I wanted to get out here and clean out this side veggie patch. Um, we are making the transition to a perennial permaculture style bed here. Um, I just need fruits and veggies that I will not need daily attention, daily maintenance on them. Um, so that's kind of the thought process there. Uh, I didn't get out here near as much as I wanted to last year. Um, I had cucumbers and beans over here. And that was just stuff that I had to do daily. I had to pick them daily and it was just a lot of extra work, uh, on me. Um, so I want to transition to more of a perennial style, uh, garden, permaculture. Um, the way the water runs off is great. We have we have no gutter system here, so the water runs off of the house, and then it trickles down. There's a slight slope here, so it trickles down slowly, and so I think it works out great. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. It's not obviously the best setup for a permaculture-style bed, um, but and it won't be the most traditional in a sense that I won't have any large trees planted here. So I won't really have that canopy layer, so we're going to experiment and see how that's going to work. Um, 
because of the house is so close, um, both mine and the neighbor's, the neighbor's house is right here on this side because they're so close i don't want to plant any trees because of the large extensive root systems i don't want to cause any kind of foundation issues uh, we may experiment with some fruit bushes uh, and maybe our research needs to go into that all right, so guys, I have a list of the plants that I'm going to put in this this bed here, this permaculture style perennial bed, and I've got a list of those already that I've picked out, things that we like already. Um, so I'm going to put a list of those in the description below. If you have any comments or suggestions for plants to put out here, that would be amazing. I'm always looking for suggestions on how to improve, so just leave those in the comments section below. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, do that now. Make sure you click the bell icon if you want notifications when we put out new content, when, when we put out new videos. Uh, you'll get an email when we do that. Um, as always, I'll keep you updated on this perennial style bed once I start getting a little bit more work done. As always, it's John with Backyard Eden. Have a great day.